welcome to another tutorial by harlapengrin.com. My name is Norm and I will be your host today. Today, I'm going to share with you three reasons why you should use open shading language. Now it's true that everything I'm going to show you today can be done by nodes. However, if you use open shading language, each of these examples is faster and allows for more flexibility than the nodes. So let's get started. We will set up Blender first, and as you can see, I've repl replaced the default cube with a sphere. I'm going to change to Cycles Render and make sure to enable Open Shading Language. And let's split the screen. Set up the Node Editor. So first, I'm going to show you how to create a new type of procedural texture. So Blender comes with a number of great textures, 12 of them in fact, which are very useful and when combined in different ways can make some interesting textures. But what if you want a procedural texture that's not in one of these? In open shading language, it's easy, it's easy to do. So for this, let's first unwrap our sphere. And for this, we're just doing a, a simple sphere projection. It doesn't have to be perfect. Next, we will add a script node. And I'll show you, we have the first of our open shading language scripts. And all of these are available at harlapengrin.com. And all of this is doing is it is taking our texture coordinates as input and it's outputting noise using a sine function multiplied times a scale. And so I will apply that. I will add in as input texture coordinates and our UV texture coordinates and connect the out color to our diffuse. And we'll take a look at this. So now if I increase this scale, you can see pattern forming. I can make this scale to whatever size I want. I can use the seed to just change the appearance to something that, that I like. And you can see just with these few lines of code, we've created a, a new procedural texture. So that's one use of, of open shading language. Create a fast new texture. The second example I'm going to show you, and for this, I'm going to go, I'm going to get rid of our, our sphere and I will actually add a cube. And I am going to also unwrap this cube. Take a look at what that unwrapping looks like. Oh, not bad. So we'll switch back to nodes. And for this one, I've made a checkerboard pattern. Now you might say there's already a procedural texture for a checkerboard. And in fact, that, that procedural texture works really well. The problem is if we wanted to make any modifications to this, it's very difficult. The only options we have are changing the colors or increasing or decreasing the scale. What I wanted to do instead was add different levels of checkerboard and cause them to interact with each other. So I will import our script and our script has a few parameters. First, of course, is our texture coordinate. So I'll set the input texture coordinate and I'll make it the UV. And now we have two options. We can either have 
an average checkerboard or a difference checkerboard. And to show you what the examples look like, here let me, let me change my scale a little bit. To show you what the differences look like, let's start with type 1. And if I have level 1, great, normal checkerboard. But if I in, start increasing the scale, it creates a different look. And I don't love the way that this is unwrapped. So I'm going to change that. Quick unwrapping. Let's just select some edges. Wrap that. Let's take a look at. Yep. Perfect. So now let's flip back to this. Rendered. And to take a look at what this looks like. We'll go back to our level one. That looks better. We could play. We could play with it a little bit. Get it to line up perfectly, but good enough for what we want to show. So now, if I increase the levels, you can see that we're starting to make a, a more interesting pattern. And what this is doing is it is taking an average of the scale at each level. So level 1 plus level 2 plus level 3 divided by 3 to give us this look. Again, we could create this if I wanted to create, say, a new material. I could create this using nodes. So all this is, is I have one texture, one checkerboard, plus another one. And we'll say that this has a scale of 10. That has a scale of 5. I have a converter, a math node, where I will input this. And I will input this and add those two together. And then I will add a divide node, divide the result of this by 2, and connect that. And again, you get the same sort of look. The difficulty is, if I want to add another level, I have to take all of these, I have to take this, can duplicate it. Then I will add another math node. Move these over. Connect this one. And then divide by three. And let's make this a scale of 15. And we've added it. So for every level that I want to add, I have to add at least two nodes. With open shading language, if I want to add another level, all I have to do is click one button. So I can have as many of these as I want. And I can change the scale however I want the scale. If I want to make it larger, if I want to make it smaller, very easy to change. The second option I have here is what is called the difference, where I am taking the difference between each level. So let's go back to 1. We'll switch our type to 2. No change because level 1, nothing to compare it to. Increase to level 2 level three, level four. So again, very easy. I can flip between these two. 
depending on, on what I want to do. And of course, once you have these set as values, then you can also animate these. So we could keyframe each one of these. If, say, we wanted to change the level over time, we could insert a keyframe here, insert a keyframe here. Let's change it to much larger. Insert a keyframe here. And now, with just a couple clicks of one value, we can show how we animated that. So those are two reasons. One, create a brand new procedural texture. Two, modifying a procedural texture in a, in a complex way with very few parameters. The third is, is sort of related to that as well. And for this, I am going to delete our cube. We're going to use a plane. I will go ahead and unwrap it. And I will flip the script to our circle gradient, or sometimes called radial gradient. Again, there is an existing radial gradient texture. You can change the look of this a little bit, but not much, not a lot of options here. So instead, we will add our script. Connect this. We'll add our texture coordinates. UV. And we have a centered radial gradient. Now, if we want to, we can increase the scale. So if we want to make it bigger, we can make them smaller so they fill. Just depends on what size we want. Let's use, let's use this. We can increase the level, which also increases the scale. Now we have a number of options. So we can use our normal. We could use average, which if we start increasing this, you can see, let's look more directly, creates interesting patterns. We can use the difference, the difference between each level. which gets darker. We can use the weight. The weight just means that level one is worth more in the final calculation than level four. And then the fourth option is the threshold. And what the threshold does is it uses the weight and then it, it basically creates a ramp that if either, if the value is less than 0.48, it sets it to black. If it's greater than 0.52, it sets it to one. So these are the options. And as you can see, again, really easy to change the scale, the type, or the level for whatever look we are looking for. So those are three reasons to use open shading language. One, create a brand new procedural texture. Two, add complexity to an existing texture. Or three, modify size, shape, position. I hope that this was useful to you. We are always looking for, for ways that we can help let us know if there are other tutorials, particularly around open shading language that you would be interested in. Thanks for watching. <laughs>